Brussels, capital of Belgium, principal seat of the Belgian royal family and capital of the European Union, is a remarkably small, easygoing and human-sized city for all its importance. Unlike beautiful Bruges and Ghent with their hordes of tourists, Brussels in Belgium's main economic and educational hub, which gives the city a more workaday feel than other towns. Here you get a proper feel for Belgian life, especially its fantastic restaurant and cafe culture. Although Brussels may not have the star tourist attractions of other Belgian towns, the capital has more than enough things to do to keep visitors occupied for a couple of days, with a clutch of world-class museums and art galleries, as well as quirkier sightseeing highlights, such as the Automium and some wonderful remnants of old architecture in the old town quarter. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Brussels. And just wait till you see what's at number 3 that we're going to be showing in this video something you would never even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides, and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now, let's cut to the chase. At 10, admire the stained glass of Notre-Dame du Sablon. The 15th to 16th century church of Notre-Dame du Sablon, generally considered one of the loveliest late Gothic churches in Belgium, was built as a replacement for a small chapel first erected on the sandy expanse of the Sablon by the Crossbowmen's Guild in 1304. The interior of the church is breathtaking, in particular because of its marvellous stained glass. Also of interest is the burial chapel of the Thuan and Taxis family, partly of the work of Luc Fadierbe. Kept in the Sarcarium is a figure of the Virgin, a copy, so legend has it, of a Madonna brought to the chapel in 1348 by a woman from Antwerp, Bad Sotens, to whom the Virgin had appeared. Next up at 9, View Mont des Arts. The Mont des Arts was created between 1956 and 1958, occupying the elevated site between the Place Royale and the Place de l'Albertine. The architecturally imposing complex of large buildings includes the Bibliothèque Albert Um and the strikingly modern Palais de la Dynastie and Palais Congress. From the square between them is a fine view of the lower central city. The Bibliothèque Albert Um was founded during the period of Burgundian rule and comprises more than 3 million volumes together with a valuable collection of manuscripts and several interesting museums. Next up at 8 Explore Kudenberg Palace archaeological site. One of Brussels' most unique things to do is to explore this active archaeological site, which was rediscovered in the 1980s. Kudenberg Palace has been excavated to reveal the cellars and tunnels of the former Palace of Brussels, as well as forgotten streets that had been buried beneath the city for centuries. The foundations of the medieval palace have been cleared to allow tourists the opportunity to explore and the museum has free audio guides that take you through the dig site. There are also interactive programs that encourage children to become involved, like the underground treasure hunt, which includes a flashlight, treasure map, period costume pieces and a puzzle for them to solve. At 7, enter the Atomium. Along with Manneken Peace, the Otomium is Brussels' best-known landmark attraction, and although it's a bit of a journey by tram to get out here, the bizarre 102-metre-high steel and aluminum structure designed by the architect André Waterkane for the 1958 Brussels World Exhibition is the city's most surreal site. The building represents a molecule of iron magnified 165 million times. Today, visitors can enter the building to explore its sci-fi-style interiors. The lower spheres are home to a permanent exhibition on the history of the structure. The upper sphere has incredible panoramas across the city. And now at 6, view the masterpieces inside the Belgian Royal Museum of Fine Arts. Belgium's Royal Museum of Fine Arts, 1875-1881, combines four separate art museums, which together are one of the largest and best art galleries in the world. The museum grew out of a collection first set up in 1797 and was originally housed in the former Palace of Charles of Lorraine. This was transferred to the newly established Musée Royal in 1846. The Musée Old Masters holds a collection of famous works by Flemish and Dutch Old Masters. Well-known works on display here include Gerard David's Adoration of the Magie, Rogier van der Weyden's The Morning of Christ, 
Pieter by Petrus Christus and Dirk Boot's Judgment of the Emperor Otto. The halls of the Musée Modern concentrate on artwork from the late 19th century to the present. It combines temporary exhibition halls with the basement galleries of the Musée Fin de Siècle, dedicated to artwork from the period between 1884 and 1914, when Brussels was one of Europe's cultural capitals. Neighbouring the main building is the Musée Magritte, dedicated to the work of Belgian surrealist artist René Magritte. This museum holds the largest Magritte collection in the world and is considered by many visitors to Brussels as the highlight of the city's many art tourist attractions. Magritte, 1898 to 1967, was one of the major artists of Belgium's surrealist art scene, and the museum displays its collection of his work chronologically, so visitors can view how his art changed across the years according to world events and his own personal and political influences. At 5, Tour de Place Royale, Konigsplein. A favourite attraction for photo ops, the most important building on this square is the Royal Palace, which is used by the Belgian royal family as an official residence. The Belgian flag, flown from the roof, signals the sovereign's presence, and a ceremonial changing of the guard takes place every day at about 2.30 p.m. From late July to late August, free guided tours of the palace's interior, taking in the grand reception rooms and halls, are available. Surrounding the palace are an ensemble of cultural buildings boasting neoclassical facades. The Palais de l'Académie, home of the Royal Academy of Sciences and once the residence of the Crown Prince of Orange, and the Palais de Beaux-Arts on the west side of the plaza, designed and built in the 1920s by Victor Horta, are two of the finest examples. At 4, see Belgium's famed comic heritage at the Belgian Comic Strip Centre. This gorgeous 1906 building, designed by Victor Horta, is home to the wonderful Comic Strip Centre, devoted to the history of cartoons and comic strips in the country that gave the world the Smurfs and Tintin. A constantly rotating exhibition of 200 original comic strip drawings by Belgian and French comic artists is shown here. In addition, the museum documents the rise in popularity of Belgian and French comic strips through a cleverly curated collection of original manuscripts, draft sketches and imaginatively reconstructed sets, including Lucky Luke's Saloon and Tim, Struppy and Captain Haddock's Moon Rocket. And now at 3, San Michel Cathedral. Dedicated to St. Michael and St. Gudula, the patron saints of Brussels, this Gothic church was first founded in 1225, but only completed in the 15th century. Well, that's taking its time. The facade is impressive, rising majestically above a broad flight of steps and crowned with twin 69-metre-high towers designed by Jan van Ruysbroek. The beautifully proportioned interior, 108 metres by 50 metres, is lavishly furnished and is home to some outstanding stained glass windows created by Bernard van Orley. Head to the transepts to see the finest examples depicting Charles V and Isabella of Portugal and the Hungarian royal pair Louis II and Mary, and then into the Chapel of the Holy Sacrament to the left of the choir where the window illustrates the story of the miracle of the host. And now, at two, visit Mannequin Peace. Along the Rue de la Tourde is Brussels' best-known landmark, the Mannequin Peace, usually besieged by a throng of tourists. Although he can be traced back to at least 1388, nothing much is known about the origin of the figure of a little boy urinating, popularly referred to as the oldest citizen of Brussels. The Mannequin is, however, surrounded by various legends. According to one, the fountain is a memorial to a courageous infant who averted a conflagration. According to another, it commemorates the son of a count who succumbed to a pressing urge while taking part in a procession. The present statue was made in 1619 by Jérôme Duquesnoy the Elder and has been stolen on several occasions, though always recovered. During major celebrations, events and festivals in Brussels, the statue is famed for being dressed in costume. And finally, at number one, stroll through Grand Place. Right in the heart of Brussels' Old Town, the city's main plaza, known as Grand Place, is one of the best preserved in Europe and the city's top tourist attraction. Much of the square's elegant character is due to the unique architecture of its elegant guild guild houses with their magnificent gables, pilasters and balustrades, ornately carved stonework and rich gold decoration. 
Grand Place's defining character is its uniformity of Baroque style, with some Flemish influences. The harmony of its architecture is achieved by the short period of construction here, with most buildings raised between 1696 and 1700. The history of the Grand Place dates back much earlier though. It was first established in the 11th century and evolved soon after to become the political and economic centre for the city. The most recognisable building on the square is the Hôtel de Ville, town hall, built in 1402 with the intention of upstaging the Stadhuis in the rival city of Bruges. Inside are several magnificent rooms. Among the most impressive are the Maximilian Chamber, hung with Brussels tapestries, the large council chamber with a superb ceiling by Victor Janssens and tapestries to his designs, the great banqueting hall and the marriage chamber, both beautifully panelled, and the Escalier d'Honneur with murals illustrating the history of Brussels. And there you have the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Brussels. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.